Okay, this is the main screen in the ProFi software. This is the first screen that you get to after you've connected with the vehicle, and you can start to see data. Now we're connected to a running vehicle that's idle, so I can have the gauges all updating and the strip chart updating across the bottom. And our goal here on this particular video is to walk you through this screen and show you the different things that you can do from this screen and the different features that we have that are available on this screen. Okay, uh, the first thing I want to point out here is this getting started button right here. If you click on that, it's going to open up an Excel spreadsheet that walks you through the important setup functions that you got to make sure are right before you start the calibration procedure. This can be printed out, it can be saved separately. Um, it's all built into the software, but you can do that. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, the firmware name is also another important thing that people forget. Uh, if you need technical support, we need to know this name so we know what version of the firmware you're out working on and the vehicle that you're working on so we know what things apply to that specific vehicle. So it's a good idea to keep this in your name when you're saving the functions or saving your calibrations so that if you send them in for tech help that we can help you a lot faster. Okay. Um, we've also got buttons on the top for opening calibrations that, for any changes that you may have made offline, saving calibrations, partial calibrations, and then the cal compare tool. Partial calibrations is a pretty neat little tool. You can use to share portions of your calibrations with other people if you want to. Um, you can go into say your boost control settings and you've got all the different things in here that you can save that are just related to boost control. Now if there's certain portions of the calibration you don't want to send for whatever reason, maybe it's on a different pin or uh, there's certain things that you just want to, don't want to share, you just uncheck those and it won't save those portions of the calibration. Okay. But otherwise, you just hit OK, type in boost control settings, and save it. All right. So that'll that's pretty handy for when you're building different maps and things like that. You can use certain things you use on another vehicle you may not use on another vehicle. You can pull those in as you need. Okay. Um, the units button right here. This is important. You want to make sure that you're setting all the values in the units that you're using. So if you want to change the PSI, degrees Fahrenheit, an air fuel ratio. All the tables that apply to those are going to be renamed and rescaled accordingly. Air fuel ratio, manifold pressure and PSI, coolant temperature and degrees F. But whatever your units are set up to be, that's the values you need to be entering in all the tables uh, throughout the software. Okay. The strip chart on the bottom, this is a really handy tool. I think a lot of people don't really use this for what it's meant to be used for. Uh, this tool is meant to save you time in the calibration process. Rather than saving and opening logs all the time, you can get all the things done that you need right here without saving and opening logs. So if you'll notice when I click on and off of this, this gives me a yellow border. This yellow border means this is the active window and if I want to pause that window I can just hit the space bar. The space bar pauses that window. Hit the space bar again and it unpauses that window. Well that's handy for dyno pulls. When you can make a pull in the dyno, you come off the idle, hit the space bar, pause the data, make any changes that you want to see, and then uh, come back and hit the space bar again and continue doing what you were doing before. This has a 20 second live view window as well as a 40 second buffer. So what that means is what you're seeing live is the most recent 20 seconds, but past that 20 seconds, it stores another 40 seconds of buffer time. So if there's anything that you missed, you get off a dynapole, you forget to hit the space bar for whatever reason, you can always come back and still get that data even if you haven't set it to record. So to do that, you just hit the space bar here and then arrow over and you'll see that that information, what I just did when I rev the throttle to show you that data is still there. Hit the space bar again and it goes back to live, okay? You also have tabs at the bottom for adding and changing channels. The Dyno tab has all the sensor tablets, uh, tables built into it. So you don't have to go through all the different ones to find them. They're all right here. So if you want to add anything, just click on the plus button and adds them over to the chart and they'll start logging those as well. If you want to take them away, you just hit the minus button and it'll remove those. You can create all the channels that you want to see, save them as a different name and then create your own set of templates that you like to use. So that can all be done through here as well. Down at the bottom over here, you can edit the colors and the ranges that are showing up. So if I want to change this from red to blue,
and set my limits different for what's being displayed in the strip chart. I can set those limits here, close them out, and that's it. There's all my changes. And then that gets saved in your template information as well. So there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do from this main screen um, as far as just kind of checking the system out and do your recording from the screen. These tabs over here will take you into the other screens. We'll go through those one at a time here as well shortly. Okay, another thing we want to cover in, in this window is what these gauges and needles do. Uh, a lot of people don't realize why we have all these different needles on these gauges. Well, the answer is pretty simple. We want to make it easy for the tuner to, at a glance, know where some of his settings are to see if there's a problem. So, for example, this needle right here tells you current RPM limit. The red needles tell you the active RPM limit, or active RPM, excuse me. And then there's a blue needle, or blue purplish needle underneath here that gives you idle set point. So, for example, when I rev that up, you'll see the idle come up and catch it, and it drops it down. And it should, those two should pretty much, when you're in the idle mode, stay right together. So if there's a problem and your target's up here and your idle's down here or vice versa, then you know you need to go make some adjustments there. Over here we have target fuel versus actual air fuel. We have target manifold pressure versus actual manifold pressure. Over here we've got where the fan set points are, so fan 1 and fan 2, when they come on. If they're on, it says enable, and they're, if they're not on, it says disable. Base fuel pressure setting, actual fuel pressure. And then over here, I've got pressure ratio if you have the exhaust back pressure. So you'll notice here, while I push in the clutch, the RPM limit changes. So this layout is just kind of at a, meant to, at a glance, tell you a few things that are going on before you get too heavily involved with the tuning. It tells you your boost set point, uh, what boost mode you're in, iBoost setting two in this particular case. If I switch that to one, it drops it down to six pounds of boost on iBoost setting one. So uh, that's kind of what these gauges are meant to do, is just kind of help aid you in quick setup and making sure you don't have anything set too far off before you start making dyno pulls.